what we're suggesting is something that we're calling getting out ahead of it and what we mean by that is practicing a vibration of letting it in when you're in a place that it's easy to practice the vibration of letting it in until you get so good of being in the place of letting it in that even when somebody's behaving in a way that you usually wouldn't let it in you're so practiced at letting it in that you don't stop letting it in because you're having a knee-jerk reaction to something that's going on you're so practiced at knowing your well-being you're so practiced at feeling blessed that when somebody who for whatever reason doesn't feel blessed themselves and so they're acting wonky around you you don't have a knee-jerk reaction to their wonkiness because you're steady in your knowing that you are blessed does that make sense so the two ways of going about that meditation is the best way we know because when you quiet your mind you stop all that wonkiness when you quiet your mind you stop thought when you stop thought you stop resistance when you stop resistance you're under the influence of your source energy and when you're under the influence of your source energy the world is brighter the world is nicer the world treats you better and you treat the world better under that influence things go well for you so when you quiet your mind you stop doing those reactionary things those knee-jerk response things so flying in yesterday Esther came from San Diego it was a long flight and she was flying Southwest which she really likes the dependability of it the sureness of it the convenience of it for her and when they landed in Boston they were 25 minutes early but the gate was still being occupied by whoever was there before so the plane sat on the tarmac which was fine she thought to herself does it matter if I'm in the air or sitting on the ground we're early so she was focusing herself into a place of feeling good and then the man behind her who she had not noticed all through the flight began to feel fitful and he was a large person and his knees apparently had been touching her seat the whole time she was just not aware of it and he began bouncing his legs in a sort of nervous disorder and as he bounced his legs with his knees against her seat her seat was vibrating pretty well so much so that she couldn't play her word game because she couldn't quite touch the spot she meant to touch on her word game and so the first minute or two she pretended it was a massage <laughs> and tried to make the best of it and then she put her word game away because it was not possible to play the word game and so she sat there under the head and then she thought I wish his knees would stop jerking and then she thought I'm having a reaction to his knee jerking is this what a knee jerk reaction is, is she couldn't stop laughing she's just thinking this is a perfect example of me having a reaction to something that's happening and then she wasn't bothered by it anymore she thought the universe deliberately brought this knee-jerking man she always thought that it were her knees that were jerking in a knee-jerk reaction the universe is so funny don't you think the universe is funny don't you think it's a wonderful thing that whatever you're wanting to know will come don't you like knowing that if you can get out ahead of it so meditation a very good way the other way is what we are calling segment intending and segment intending means being in a segment aware that you're going to move into another segment and using this segment to make your statements of desire about the next one and so Esther has begun she has several notebooks full of these segments now she's discovered that by focusing on a word a feeling word like I feel eager or I feel satisfaction or I feel blessed or I feel open to what's coming next or I feel an eagerness for understanding or I feel blessed in this moment as she finds these words that in writing them slowly generates the emotion within her what she's noticing is that she said to a friend the other day I thought segment intending because we've been talking about it for a while the first recording that we made with Jerry was the law of attraction the second one was the law of deliberate creation the third one was the art of allowing the fourth one was segment intending that's how far back this idea of deliberately focusing goes in this spewing that Esther's been doing for us and 
Esther said, I thought that what segment intending was, was recognizing that I'm getting into my vehicle and I'm now saying to the universe, I want safety and I want smooth transfer and I want cooperative drivers. And it is some of all of that. It's focusing all of that. But Esther said, now I'm understanding that it's not about me powerful me hooking up with source energy and getting out there and changing circumstances and events in order to accommodate me hear this no it's me finding words that make me words of blessing words of love it's about me deliberately affecting my point of attraction so that as I move out into the world my point of attraction lets in this good thing and this good thing and this good thing because as you move through space and time it's all out there so you're not dictating what out there is I'm coming out there out there get ready for me and be good because I'm coming out there <laughs> that's kind of the way she thought segment intending was now she realized that I'm coming out there out there and I know there's a lot out there and here I am this is who I am as I move out there and law of attraction will gather up the out there that matches what's going on in here does that make sense to you segment intending is getting out ahead of it it's identifying is acknowledging the well-being of you because life is coming at you all kinds of things are out there because this is a universe with so much diversity and so much contrast so much variety it's all out there it's attraction 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 so what is my state of being what is my being of attraction what state of being am I in as I'm moving through the seas of people in the airport and on the airplanes and in the restaurants and in traffic what is my point of attraction meaning what is my point of letting what in what have I practiced how do I feel step one is you sift through the contrast and you're asking for things as they come to you that's as big as life really needs to be in terms of you filling your vortex full of powerful intentions your life has given you so much input and you have come to so many really important decisions about who you are and what you want you just don't need to stress over that you're at the place where what you really want to do is just know that it's there and trust that it's there it's there we promise you that it is there and then you get out ahead of any potential of blocking it off by making sure that you're not in a blocking off moment by making sure that you're not in a hateful moment or a confused moment because if you're in a state of confusion clarity can't get in well Abraham that sucks <laughs> if you're feeling not appreciated appreciation can't get in if you feel disadvantaged if you feel abused pretty soon somebody will be abusing you that's never abused anyone in their life it's attraction it's attraction it's attraction it's attraction it's attraction it's attraction so you've done all the step ones and the step two is all lined up for you now your singular work is to moment by moment look for reasons to feel open and allowing of the good things that you've been asking for Thank you, Abraham. Yeah. I've discovered you properly since April. We've known you forever. <laughs> I love the what now, so I'm going to ask you about what now. Um, How's today been going for you? Fantastic. And you get the sense of it, yes. You're going to follow the theme of that, yes? I'm not in a creative profession. Uh, yeah, everyone is, though. It doesn't matter, but... I love what I do, which is about the law and I wanted to ask you we'll interrupt very briefly everyone is a creator and you are the creation that you are creating so no matter where you are putting your focus or your interest it's all about your exhilaration it's all about your joyful becoming you see yeah um, I've always been somebody very joyful greedy I always thought I needed three lives you're just not trying I always thought I wanted three lives in different places to make the Very. most of 
of what was in my vortex. Uh, I'm a French citizen in the UK. You want three lives because... Now, is that lackful thinking? No. Yes, it is. I need three lives because while I'm doing this, I'm missing that and I'm missing that and I'm missing that. So your point of attraction is all jacked up because you're missing things that you want. So you're not really even letting in the things that you think you're letting in because you're more aware of what you're not letting in than enjoying what you are letting in. Things have changed in the last few months. Um, Let's do a segment to soothe that just a little bit. So I like knowing that in this moment in time, there is enough for full satisfaction for me. I like being ravenous about the thought I'm thinking. And I like being so focused about what's coming that I feel satisfaction for it as it comes and eagerness for what's coming next. But I really like the power of my thought. And imagination. Yeah. What is imagination? Imagination is visualizing how the world could be. No, it isn't. Creating. No, it isn't. You think that imagination is you making the image. And it isn't. It's you receiving the image. It's you making an image out of the vibration that you're receiving. It's you turning a vibration to a thought. That's imagination. It's you being in the receiving mode. You already put it all in your vortex, but imagination is being in that receiving mode where there's no resistance spewing out of you because you're not complaining about not getting to do everything at once. So that's not happening. Instead, you're feeling satisfaction about your ability to receive and translate. And so in that state of non-resistance, the vibrations are occurring to you and you are turning at an unconscious level of your being, you are turning those vibrations into images. That is imagination. Thank you. It makes sense. Oh, it sounds like a nitpicking, but it isn't nitpicking. It is the most important thing because you know what keeps most of you from letting in what you want? You're asking so hard from a place of not having it. Bring to me this thing I do not have, universe. Bring to me this thing I do not have, universe. Bring to me this thing I do not have, universe. Let me imagine a world that's different than it is. Let me imagine. And we say, no, you've already lived it. You've already asked for it. It's already there. Now you just want to find some feeling that will let those images of what you're asking for come into your mind and then come into full manifestation in your life experience. This is big. This is the thing that is keeping most people from getting what they want. They're saying the words, but they've not produced the emotion within themselves. They have not accomplished the point of attraction that will let it in. And that's why we say it's lip service, lip service, lip service. Everybody running around, giving affirmations, saying all the right words, making it sound real pretty, putting a smile on their face. But it's what's in your gut. It's the emotion that you feel. And you must find ways. You must find ways to focus and verbalize and contour the things that you are living and thinking about in a way that makes you feel blessed, that makes you feel happy, that makes you feel worthy, that makes you feel expectant of more good things to come. And then they come and you go, wow. And then they come and you go, wow. And they come and you go, wow, I'm really good at this. Yeah. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.